you know, uh, the, how the answers are truly the answer. Question one, dash refers to the structure of a work of art. And I have these options here. Form, that's for option A. And for B, I have plots. For C, I have setting. And for D, I have style. If I have to look at how I'm going to choose the answer, I'll have to use the system we call the elimination method. First, I'll ask myself, what is structure in relation to this question? Structure is not a style. Structure is not setting. Structure is not even form other than what is called the plot. So the correct answer to this question is option B, which is a plot. What does plot mean? Plot, of course, is the sequential arrangement of events and how uh, they connect from the level of exposition to the level of rising action, to the point of climax, to the point of falling action, and then to the final point, which is uh, the concluding part, and that is conflict resolution. Let's move to question two. Conflict in a literary work begins to unfold with dash. A, I have climax. B, I have episode. C, I have exposition. And D, I have resolution. The answer is not episode. The answer is not even resolution. The answer is not even exposition other than what is called climax there. Even though it is the highest stage of action there. That is when you begin to see the uh, actions being on four. Question three. The character assumed by the writer in his writing is dash. I have the protagonist, I have chorus, I have persona A, and I have pseudonym. Of course, it is not protagonist, it is not chorus, the answer is not even persona A, but it is pseudonym. How do I mean pseudonym? It is not the real character, but just uh, a character who is created by, by the writer himself, just to be a part of the story. Let's move to question four. Oral literature is a part of Dash. Oral literature is a part of Dash. Option A, I have drama, then I have folklore, I have poetry, and I have music. Of course, you can't go for music. You can't even go for poetry. And you can't go for drama, other than what is called folklore. Folklore, of course, is just a type of oral literature. And the, the opposite of that can be said to be for tale. Let's move to question five. Then poetry is written in dash. How is, how do you write poem? That is what the question is here. You can't go for chapters because chapters will be for prose work. You can't go for paragraphs, it's just for essays. You can't go for scenes as well because scenes will be for drama. Of course, we have to go for option D, which is lines you have there. Question six now. Soliloquy is dash technique. Soliloquy is just uh, a, a dramatic technique where a character you know, talks to himself on stage. You understand? Talks to himself by pouring out his mind to the audience there. Even when you have even when the author or, 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 the, or the, the, the character has something in his mind to push out to the audience without the other characters there. So we can go for what is called dramatic and not descriptive, not even narrative, not even poetry. Descriptive will be for, of course, uh, prose work. Why narrative, of course, can also be for prose work. Poetry is just for poems and why dramatic will be a very good one for soliloquy. Let's go for question seven. The dash produces comic relief in drama. Option A, I have chorus, and I have protagonists. I have antagonists, and I have clown here. Of course, the correct answer to this question is clown, otherwise known as the jester. That's the person who creates humor in anything you call uh, when a drama is too tragic, he is called upon to play a very short role 
just to create a humorous scene to really reduce the tension created by the tragic uh, play. Let's move to question eight. A short play is also called dash. I have fast, I have novelettes, I have playlets, and I have slapstick. Of course, you cannot go for fast, even though fast is a form of drama. You can't go for playlets as well, because it's just a sub part of play. You can't go for slapstick. Of course, we have to go for what is called, uh, we, we can't go for novelettes, rather, other than what is called uh, playlet, which is just a sub of a major play. So playlets, of course, will be the correct answer to this question. Novelettes, of course, is for novels. Why fast and slapstick, of course, are just forms of, 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 of a drama. The major part of the Shakespearean sonnet is the dash. Of course, if you have to go for the correct option to this question, you can't go for quintet, you can't go for tacit, you can't go for sestet as well. Of course, we go for the octave. Shakespearean is a no, uh, poem, we always have two parts. And the first major part is the octave, which is the first eight lines, while the last part will be the sestet, which is the six. Uh, which is six lines, so all together we make 14 to make the whole of sonnets. Let's go to the next question. Yes, question 11. A poem that celebrates an object, person, or event is dash. When a, a poem is written to appreciate an object or a person, what is that poem called? We can't go for ballad. We can't go for dirge. We can't go for sonnets other than what is called an ode. An ode is just an, an, an address to a particular person or object just to celebrate it. A similar type of a poem to that ode is what is called lyric. So the answer is ode. Let's move to question 12 now. Here, that it will rain is not unlikely illustrates the use of dash. That it will rain is not unlikely illustrate the use of dash. Irony will be wrong. Metaphor will be wrong as well. Metonymy will also be wrong other than choosing what is called lightotis. Lightotis will be the correct answer. What does it mean? That is when you are trying to express the positive by using the negative. Either using no or not. That it will rain is not unlikely, meaning that it will definitely rain, and that is light it is. Let's move to question 13. And dash is an indirect and usually unfavorable remark. I have allusion, I have irony, and I have aside and in rainy. Of course, it is, not, it is not allusion because allusion, of course, is a slight reference to a particular event. You can't choose irony because it's just a figure of speech. Not that it's just a figure of speech. It is also something that creates the opposite of what it is said. We can't go for aside. Aside, of course, is related to drama. And of course, it is the opposite. But let me just say something that relates to uh, soliloquy. The only difference is just that in aside, when the character is pointing out his mind to the audience, the other characters are there, or they are seen, or they are programmed not to hear what the character is saying. Of course, we have to go for innuendo. Innuendo, of course, is an indirect attack. You're trying to uh, attack someone, not directly, but indirectly. So that is, we have it as understatement, not an overstatement there. So the answer is innuendo. It's an understatement that is meant to attack someone. Let's move to question 14. Question 14, many hands make light work, demonstrates the use of dash. We have Zygma, we have Hyperbole, we have Metonymy, and we have Synedoki. It is not Zygma because Zygma is just like trying to use uh, a particular verb, you know, uh, for two purposes. And we can't go for Hyperbole because Hyperbole is just like a form of exaggeration. Uh, we can't go for metonymy, of course, because metonymy simply means uh, a change of name. 
that is figure of uh, association. You cannot always go for sinedoki here because it is when uh, a part is used to represent a whole and then a whole is also used to represent a part here. So many hands make light work. That is a whole to represent a part as well. So let's move to question 15. Through dash, the ills of the society are criticized. I have iron here, and I have comic relief, satire, and farce. We can't go for irony because irony is just saying the opposite of, of, of saying something and then meaning the opposite. We can't go for comic relief because comic relief is just a short uh, humorous scene that is added to a tragic play just to reduce the tension. We can't go for farce as well because farce is just a form of comedy as well, or probably uh, a, a work of art that contains uh, incredible actions here. You can go for satire because satire will be for a work of art that, you know, uh, indirectly criticize either someone or a particular society there. Question 16. A character whose flaws combined with external forces lead to suffering is a dash. I have heroine, I have tragic hero, and I have hero and then protagonist. Of course, the answer cannot be protagonist. It is not hero. It is not even heroine. Then I'll go for option B, which is a um, tragic hero, because tragic hero is a type of hero in tragedy uh, whose flaws will actually lead to is a downfall. And because of some other forces like uh, external forces, he is programmed to suffer the end, either by death or by being captured. So whatever happens to the hero in the end, as long as he is not uh, a victor, of course, we call him a tragic uh, hero. Let's move to question 17. A question which does not require an answer is, of course, a rhetorical question, not a discourse, not an ironic, and not even a flashback. Flashback, of course, is uh, a narrative. Not even a narrative, right? It's just like a dramatic technique used in uh, drama to recall, uh, of course, the, the past. Then it is not even ironic because it doesn't have anything to do with a question that does not actually demand an answer. So when you throw out a question that does not demand an answer, meaning that you are the one who can answer the question yourself, we call it a rhetorical question. Question 18. A speech in a play in which a character speaks his or her thoughts alone is dash. It's not a monologue, even though monologue is a lone drama. It is not even a side, even though a side will have to be uh, a part of you know, a monologue as well. It is not an epilogue. Of course, epilogue will be uh, a speech that is made after uh, a play. The answer will have to be soliloquy, because soliloquy is where a character uh, is a situation where a character speaks his mind to the audience, where other characters are not there. But unlike a side, other characters are there. The only thing is that they are programmed not to hear what the character is uh, saying. So, so Lilo can be the best option here to pick. Let's move to question 19. In literature, repetition is used essentially for dash. Option A, you have rhyme, suspense, allusion, and emphasis. Of course, repetition is when you're trying to emphasize either a particular idea or a particular word in a work of art, most especially in poem. You cannot go for suspense, because suspense is for drama as well. Rhyme for rhyme, rhyme, of course, is for poems. You can't go for allusion. Allusion, of course, can be for post works and others. Right? You can always go for emphasis, which is uh, the one that will create that uh, effect of 
repetition in that work of art. So emphasis is the purpose of repetition. Let's move forward. Let's move to question 20. The performance of a play constitutes the dash. The performance of a play constitutes the dash. We have chorus, we have characters, we have audience, and then we have cast. Of course, the answer will be cast here because in the play, we have the list of actors and actresses in the work of art. So not characters, not even audience, and not chorus, but cast, which of course defines the list of the actors and characters, or the actors and the actresses in the work of art, especially the play. Let's move to question 20. The performance of a play constitutes the dash. I have chorus, characters, audience, and cast. Of course, the correct answer to this question is Cast. Cast, of course, is the list of actors and actresses in a play. <laughs>